Hello, I'm Anne Montgomery, Editor-in-Chief of Bioprocess International Magazine. I'm here at Biotech Week in Boston speaking with several thought leaders about advancements in bioprocessing and cell therapy development. I hope you enjoy their insights and their visions for the future. I'm Tyler Merkley. Um, I work for Health and Human Services and the Biomedical Advanced Research and Development Authority, which is an office within uh, the Office of the Secretary for the U.S. Government's Health and Human Services. And our focus is on uh, ensuring that we develop products uh, to address pandemic and uh, CBRN threats, so chemical, biological, radiological, and nuclear threats, in addition to emerging infectious diseases. I uh, am currently the program manager for our CARB-X initiative, which is a new initiative we launched in uh, 2016. Um, and I came to the government about seven years ago uh, to uh, work really in bring together both the scientific community and the business community around the government to make sure that we are providing the right incentives uh, to promote new product development. Um, in our area, we're in emerging infectious disease in the biodefense space, um, but these are very applicable to different technology fields across the scientific community. Naturally, the Biomedical Advanced Research and Development Authority, BARDA, um, is really responsible for ensuring that we have a national preparedness for pandemic and emergent threats, uh, including the CBRN threats, so things like plague and tularemia, and then also emerging infectious disease like Ebola and Zika. So naturally, because of that role that we play in making sure there's new vaccines and therapeutics and diagnostics available to respond to those threats, we work with companies of all sizes, some small companies, large companies, and and medium companies that, that, are, that are transitioning in a transition stage. So one of the unique opportunities is really to work with small startup companies, um, companies that are you know, developing their first product. And BARDA sees a lot of technologies and companies in that space uh, just because of the nature of the, the field that we're working in in preparedness. Uh, so thinking about what we need to do as a government uh, to, and, and specifically as BARDA to provide scientific support, business support and financial funding to these startup companies um, is, has been a great kind of opportunity to work with startup companies and figure out exactly how we need to support them to continue their technologies on. Because in the end of the day, our organization is about preparedness, um, but we're uh, focused on making sure that key uh, medical countermeasures are available to the public in an emergency, but also to be used in more routine situations. So one of our major focuses is on developing new antibiotics and antibacterials to address the threat of combating antibiotic resistance. Um, as you're probably aware, there's two million infections a year uh, based on the 2013 CDC report, and about 23,000 Americans die of antibiotic resistance every year. So we're looking at this as an opportunity to enhance national preparedness uh, to develop new antibiotics, and we have a multiple of different programs at BARDA working on that, many with small and medium-sized companies. Well, I think any time a, a company fails um, because of a lack of funding or even the business acumen to continue to move those programs forward, um, it results in us not having new innovative technologies that are moving forward into the clinic uh, for those companies to develop and eventually to be available to help treat patients. So it, it's a major innovation gap anytime we have failure. You know, failures can happen for different reasons. There can be scientific failures, there can be business and leadership failures, and then there's obviously the funding aspect. One of the things that BARDA, when we provide specific funding, for example, with our CARBEX initiative that's focused on accelerating antibiotic development, is we're really focused on making sure we're providing the wraparound services, the scientific support to the company, especially a startup company that's in development, also making sure that we're providing the business acumen to these companies and providing them with the links to the business community that they're gonna need to potentially move their technology from preclinical development into the clinic. And then we're also providing very specific funding. Uh, in the initiative with our CARBEX initiative, it's a five-year, $350 million initiative in which BARDA is investing $250 million with an additional $100 million coming from the AMRC Center and Wellcome Trust in the UK. So this is a great opportunity in which we're bringing multiple partners together, all providing non-diluted funding, which is really important to early stage pharmaceutical companies um, and startups, and, and helping really accelerate those products through early development. So I think 
Anytime there's a failure, we need to look at why there's a market failure, why there's failure in certain stages, and make sure one of the government's inherent functions is to make sure that we're helping identify policies and strategies to address that. And that's exactly what BART is doing in the combating antimicrobial space. the breadth of the scientific community is very large, right? And there's many different kind of products and technologies that are in development. Uh, the Biomedical Advanced Research and Development Authority is very focused on emerging infectious diseases, CBRN threats, things like pandemic influenza, developing new antibiotics. But there's other organizations like us in the federal government and in the private sector um, and in the nonprofit community that are also focused on similar things. So I guess my advice to a startup company that's developing is, is to constantly think about your technology, not necessarily directly where you think it's applicable, but what other stakeholders and funding resources and support is out there in the community that may be able to leverage. So for example, you know, BARDA initially's biodefense mission was very focused on developing new antibiotics. And, and what we recognized in there was both there was a commercial application of it uh, for things like urinary tract infection, a hospital acquired pneumonia, and also the biodefense application for things like plague and tularemia. So when companies came to us, we supported both the commercial indication to help them get to market and also the biodefense Im implications. So as different startups are looking for funding, one thing is to look out into the broader network and say, how is my technology applicable to other government agencies, to other nonprofit organizations, and how could I partner with those organizations and leverage their funding both to move forward my interests and also potentially their interests. Uh, so those would be some suggestions of, of how we can continue to innovate in the space.